Well, welcome back to RV Kitchen with Eveda Cooper and me. I'm Dave Dufour. We're talking about uh, the planning and purchasing an RV. And part of the process is, of course, making sure that that kitchen is going to work for you. Um, before we start in, though, just want to mention again the uh, book, the uh, RV Centennial Cookbook, and uh, there is uh, something a little different that you're doing with with some of the pricing there, or, or actually, just tell us what you're doing with the with the income. You can order that book at mobilerveacademy.com, and then what happens? Correct. Um, of course, ordering this book through our website, um, we have recently heard about the. Uh, financial woes that is going on with the RV Me Museum there in Elkhart, Indiana. And because of that, my heart goes out to those folks. Uh, I, I, was, I was at the museum for the first time this past September, and what a great thing that was, uh, seeing all that history. I want to do a, my part in helping. So all the sales that are coming in on the cookbook throughout 2011, 5% of those sales are going to be given over to the museum. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, then we're talking about the RVMH Hall of Fame Museum here in uh, uh, in Elkhart, Indiana, where our studios are. And it's uh, it's a fascinating place to go. It's a large facility, uh, obviously, uh, to hold a collection of RVs going back literally 100 years. You can see one of the first RVs uh, that ever made that could be considered an RV. Of course, uh, some people think Conestoga wagons were RVs, and uh, so that, that isn't exactly true but uh they weren't recreational anyway <laughs> but uh they were maybe they were the first mobile homes so but yes the uh, rv uh, mh hall of fame also uh, looks at the manufactured housing industry as well and the history of that um anyway so if you purchase the book at mobilerveacademy.com you're helping the uh um you're helping the museum and uh if you use the coupon code rvnn11 you will get free shipping of the book uh, and it is on the cusp of full release right now isn't it Iveda? yes it is okay. we're expecting it out the last week of march we're real excited about that and we have four book signings scheduled for april we have uh, a great book tour that's going to start taking place during the summer so we're really looking forward to that Okay, we are uh, uh, talking today about uh, the RV kitchen and how you evaluate uh, those kitchens in terms of space. We have a few photos of, of, uh, of uh, RV kitchens uh, that uh, you're going to tell us a little bit about, but there's, there's sort of a little context here to this, which is that you are in fact uh, shopping for an, a new RV uh, yourself, so this is all very timely for you as well. Yes, it is. Terry and I have decided that this is the year that we're going to be going full-timing. Mm -hmm. uh, we have lots of opportunities to be out uh, in, on the lots, whether it's new or used, and so we're looking at all the different types of RVs that might suit our needs. So I'd like to take our viewers on that, um, that search with us, seeing the things that are great, things that... Um, that I feel like are just an A plus on kitchens. Obviously, depending on who uh, who you are, what your lifestyle is, uh, whether you're just out for R and R, if you're this is something that you're do going to do for full timing. Obviously, all those things play uh, a part in your decisions on which ones you're going to choose. Okay, well, let's take a look at our first picture here. Okay, um, this is a great kitchen. Um, it has some great valuable counter counter space. However, what, uh, what I was wanting to point out about this particular kitchen was the lack of space around the stove top. Um, usually the, the stoves, refrigerators, a, a lot of the units, that's, that will be placed in a slide out. Mm -hmm. um, and I suppose maybe for that reason, there's not a lot of space over there. Um, but there's not spaces for bowls or your cookbooks or anything like that. So that was something that I thought that was a little lacking. However, on the reverse side where the sink area is, oh, that's some great space. You've got that overhang uh, overhead uh, cabinet up there. Whether or not that would uh, bother you hanging there while you're um, – while you're washing dishes and so forth. So those are some of the things to look at. I did notice that right there on the end, it does have one of those uh, extendable countertops to uh, make that a little bit more for you, uh, which I think is a great feature. Okay. All right, well, let's, what's our, what about our next one here? Uh, this is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, uh, 
that particular kitchen does have a four-door refrigerator. Right. Um, twice the space over there on by the countertop. We have a large area for bowls and cookbooks and so forth. Uh, that is a great area, that wraparound cabinet. It, uh, our countertop is uh, great for, uh, like, if you have many people in your family, you want to do buffet style, throw some uh, bar stools up to that for extra seating. This is a great kitchen. Uh, it has great task lighting. I can see that there as well. A lighting is a very important part of the kitchen. Uh, we want to make sure that um, we have plenty of uh, light there. Yeah, and I know you. We, we uh, you, you were talking about uh, before the show a little bit about uh, outlets, and of course, now in that photo that we just saw, that it doesn't look like there are a lot of outlets, but many times these outlets are kind of strategically placed, and that and 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 well placed, as a matter of fact. Yes, they are. Um, I will notice that, especially on those wraparound countertops, there there will be plugs usually place over on the other side so watch for those usually uh, obviously they're going to be some on the walls however you might all take a look at the underneath of that overhead uh, cabinet hanging there because they're starting to place electrical outlets up there as well I think that's a great feature because as you plug in up there it keeps your cord up and it lessens the amount of space that that uh, cord is laying around on your counter. Mm -hmm. So I also saw, uh, it wasn't this particular model, but when I was out last weekend um, at, the, at an RV dealer, there was uh, inside a pantry was actually a electrical plug and a, the pull-out shelf. So obviously this was a great space for maybe a, um, a mixer or a toaster oven or something like that. When it's not in use, you just push it back in, close the doors. I thought that was a wonderful feature. Great. Well, what, uh, okay, we have another another uh, kitchen here to look at, a little different layout, and uh, lots of floor space. Yes, uh, but lacking in the kitchen, <laughs> at least through my eyes. Yeah. You know, uh, normally a kitchen like this is on a unit that is much smaller, probably 30 feet or less. Um, probably a not a pe lot of people that are in this RV, so maybe just a couple. Maybe that's adequate amount for someone who does more microwave cooking, that sort of thing. But if you're someone who's going to want to mix up your own recipes, that sort of thing, you're going to need a little bit more cabinet uh, space than that. So for this, I would start looking at some sort of island that you could put in there. Preferably something that is on wheels, so that way it can be shoved out of the way when it's not in use. Okay, great. Okay, and you have one. Uh, one. We actually, we're going to look at a couple of potential island candidates here uh, uh, in our next segment, but we still have one more kitchen to look at. And here I we are. I believe that this is the kitchen, um, maybe from before, but just at a different angle. Oh, I just see. Just showing you that um, almost it is a little bit. It does have that pull-out counter uh, top, which is great. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a photo shoot in a kitchen that was like this, and it, and it did work okay for us. Um, and when the you're not in the kitchen, not using that, you just fold that right back down, so that way the walk-through area is great. Okay. I mean, when you're when you're walking through these kitchens, I mean, storage is is kind of one of the primary things that you really have to check on as well i mean uh, not only the layout the way you can walk around but where do things go correct um to me inside those drawers do they extend all the way uh inside the cabinet doors what kind of height am i working with am i going to have places for my deep pots am i going to have places for my uh, cookie sheets those sorts of things all of those things are you need to take uh, an account when you're looking for uh, your RV kitchen. Okay. Well, we're going to be back in just a moment with more from the RV kitchen, uh, looking at some accessories that you can use to make your life in the kitchen and around the kitchen a lot, um, lot more uh, smooth running and a lot more enjoyable. So stay with us. We'll be right back on RV Kitchen. 
Today's show is brought to you by Angie's List, where you'll find thousands of unbiased reports and reviews about service companies in your area. Whether you're looking for a roofer, plumber, house cleaner, dentist, or even a doctor, Angie's List members share their experiences with each other so that you can choose the service company that's right for your job. Companies can't pay to be on Angie's List, and the reviews come from people just like you who have had experience with the companies mentioned. To find out more, go to rvnn.tv and click on the Angie's List ad.